man. This is a device I created to challenge your friends and find out who's the quickest on the draw. Setting up this challenge is an absolute breeze. All you need is a shot glass filled with something nasty, like lemon juice, and a friend. Or a clone if that's more convenient. Here's how it works. Step 1. Grab your trusty shot glass and get ready for action. Step 2. Fill it up and put it in the holder. Step 3. Both players put their fingers on the buttons and watch the LED in the middle, getting ready for it to light up. Step 4. The moment the light turns on, both players press their buttons as fast as they can. Step 5. The device calculates the reaction time for both players, displays the fastest one, and, after just a moment, Step 6. The shot glass rotates to the loser, requiring them to take the nasty shot. This project has it all. Lights. Buttons. Dubious liquids. And if you want to learn how to make one yourself, stick around because I'm going to walk you through the whole process. First things first. Let's talk about the brains behind this operation. Originally, I was going to use an Arduino Nano due to its compact size and ample power. However, after looking around, I realized that the ESP8266 is much lower cost, the same size, and even faster. It's like an infomercial. I'm wondering, why is nobody getting these fantastic deals? Anyways, I'm going to be using an ESP8266 microcontroller for this project. They come in at just $2.50 when you buy them in a pack of 10. Moving on to the input side, I stumbled across these awesome, colorful, arcade-style buttons. They work just like any other button and only allow current to flow when pressed. They are also so satisfyingly clicky. We could use these buttons for anything, like turning on a light, but for now, we're just going to connect them to two digital pins on the ESP. And with that, our input setup is done. Now let's dive into the output, and this is where things get really interesting. We're going to need a couple of different outputs. An LED to show us when to press the buttons, a servo to rotate the shot glass, and a small display to show our reaction times. Here's how it all breaks down. For our LED, we're going with this little 5mm number. That's going to cost just about 5 cents. This little 9 gram servo, which costs just about $2, will take care of our shot glass rotation. You may recognize it from my Zella chest video, where I used it to open the chest. To display our reaction times, I went with this little SSD1306 LCD display. It's 128 by 32 pixels, bright, easily legible, and only costs $2.50. Additionally, it uses I2C for communication, so that means only two extra pins on our ESP8266. With all of our components, our total cost comes out to just $7.05. We'll round up to eight for things like wire and solder, etc, etc. And now we're going to move on to the part that is actively receding my hairline, the code. Now whoa, 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 don't click away quite yet. I'm just going to go over the code at a high level, and if you stick around, you'll get to see me take a shot of something nasty. Deal? The code is pretty simple. We set up some inputs, we set up some outputs, and then we run through a series of states in the loop. This design allows us to isolate the part of the code that is responsible for checking the button presses. This ensures that we don't have anything else interfering, and we get the most accurate timing possible. Now that the code's sorted, we can move on to wiring, following this diagram. We'll run a couple of tests, and voila, everything's working perfectly. Next, we're going to move on to creating a sleek case to house this creation. To keep everything looking nice and hide my wire monstrosity, I jumped into my design program of choice and created a three-piece case, consisting of a base, a body, and an arm. The arm holds the shot glass and connects to the servo. The body holds the LED, the display, and the buttons. And the base holds the servo down and keeps everything together. After many, many, many revisions, I finalized the design and eagerly began printing the final product. Unfortunately, this is when my 3D printer decided to give up on me. After a brief Viking funeral, I obtained the replacement parts I needed and printed my final design in this awesome orange PLA. With the printed parts ready, it was time to put everything together. I snapped the buttons into place, attached the arm to the servo, and securely hot glued in the LED and display. After plugging it in and programming it, voila! It was done! Now, armed with this device, you can challenge your friends and discover who truly has the quickest trigger finger. The added potential for a nasty consequence, a gulp of something utterly repulsive, really elevates the game and makes every win and loss much more serious. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video enough to leave a like and maybe even subscribe. As promised, because you got to all the way to the end, you get to watch me take this nasty shot. <coughs> if you want any of the stuff that you saw in this video, the links will be in the description. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time on Make It For Less.